Dear viewer, welcome again to our series on 40 Days of Prayer. Today is day 14, and we are still on and receiving blessings from the Lord. We are here one more time to thank him, to praise him, to ask of him, and to listen uh, from him. Now, I am going to discuss with us this morning. As you said yesterday, we are starting the series of uh, the Word of God, and we are especially today looking at the Word of God as a sword, a sword that is able to dissect, to cut, to penetrate, you know, to get deep into our issues of our lives and be able to provide solutions, be able to break down the strongholds of the evil one. This is what we're having this precious moment as we pray and seek the Lord in prayer. Before we get there, let's seek him in prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you for this precious moment. As we begin this program this morning, we want to thank you even for those who could be watching it in the afternoon or in the evening or whatever time that we shall all be united together by this prayer moment and the blessing that come thereof. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Hebrews text in chapter 4, verse number 12, is our guiding text here. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12, the word of God here, very, very carefully uh, written speaking to the power of the word of God in a symbol of a sword. The word of God says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What a text. I want to read one more time. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12. Remember, we are talking about the power of the word of God in the symbol of a sword. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I don't know what is the word of God to you and in your life. I don't know what you use the word of God for in your life. But I personally have used the word of God in various ways. This word of God, I've used it as a means of encouragement. Whenever I feel so low, I like going to the scriptures and open the scriptures and especially I love the book of Psalms when I'm low and listen to those songs, the book of Psalms, you know, those beautiful pieces of wisdom that are there and inspired writings there. I, I, I also like reading the book of Isaiah um, among many other books in the Bible. I, I like also coming to the New Testament to hear and to see and to interact with Jesus himself and, you know, the... the, the God's power in human form, you know, through Christ Jesus. And whenever I interact with the scriptures, something happens in my life. You know, it leaves me different. It leaves me, if I was slow and feeling hopeless, it gives me strength, it revives me. But also, I have used the word of God, I use the word of God as a means of speaking to my own situations of weaknesses. When I'm feeling I'm struggling in some habits, in some sin, in some challenges that are in contrary to the will of God. I find time in the scriptures and I hear the word of God speaking to me, challenging me, warning me, redirecting my ways of life. And I feel, I feel forgiveness is coming and an assurance of confidence that comes from the promises of the word of God. I, I, I become rejuvenated and strengthened and I find more sense as a believer in trusting the Lord. You see, one of the things that we need to appreciate is that the word of God, as you know, Paul put it, it is very quick and powerful. Quick. It, it can 
come to you so quickly than you thought. It, it, it can get into you and, and, and cause a revival and a transformation in a manner you'd never expected. The word of God is so powerful, you know. The, the word of God is like, it has the power like that which is found in a seed, you know, seed. A seed, uh, when you plant it in the soil, uh, you, you, you just sow it there, and, and you leave it there. You just leave it there and go, and, and, and you just hope rains are going to come. And if there are no rains, you can just water that seed. Uh, you, once you water it, and, and it's in the soil, you know, the seed has power within itself to cause life to begin. That seed. And the Word of God, in other portions of the Bible, is, is symbolized as a seed. But the word of God has power. Whenever it is put in the right place, it is sown, sown in the, the right place. It has power of itself to cause life. You see, uh, yesterday when we were speaking about the power of the spoken word, I, I forgot to remind you when, when God takes, takes Ezekiel in, in, in the valley of, of the dry bones, you know that story. And, and he just was so just, just speak, speak to the bones. And, and when, when Isaiah, Ezekiel spoke to the bones, the bones began, came back to life again. You know, the joints joined together, the ligaments of the veins and everything came together, flesh came, and, 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 the, and the, the, the dry bones became living beings. You know, that is power. That is power. Now, in this text here, Paul says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and than any two-edged sword that one can penetrate corners that nothing else can penetrate. Some corners of your heart. The, the word of God is able to, uh, to, 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 to loosen the, the tight bolts in your life, to, to loosen them, that, that, that you, can, you can accept to become a Christian, you can accept to be with God, you can accept to, to, to perceive what God expects and, and want of you. The word of God has a way of, of softening us. And, and not just softening us. The text here says piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. That the word of God has a way of working deep into our souls and into the intent of our thoughts. And, and, and spirit, it says, it's a dishonor of, of that which is in our thoughts, which has not been put into action. It can be able to discern and, and tell this is what you're intending to do. And the word of God can change you, can transform you, can stop you from being in, in a wrong path. You know, the word of God is able to discern not only your good intention, but also your bad intention, intentions and be able to redirect you and, and, and bring you into focus and into perspective in the will of God. Uh, Bible may be studied as branch of human science would be, but its beauty, the evidence of its power to save the soul that believes is a lesson that is never thus learned. If the practice, and this is where I want you to listen, to, if the practice of the word is not brought into the life, then the sword of the spirit has not wounded the natural heart. It has been shielded in poetic fancy. Sentimentalism has so wrapped it about that the heart has not sufficiently felt the, the keenness of its edge, piercing and cutting away the sinful shrines where self is worshipped. Very, very powerful text here. And I want to especially to emphasize if the practice of the word is not brought into the, the life, then the sword of the spirit has not wooden the natural heart. This is our high calling, page 203 by Ellen G. White. Question here this moment. Has the sword of the spirit wounded your heart? Oh, how I pray that it may be wounded, that you may receive healing from the word of God. What is it that troubles your soul? What is it that you have hidden in your heart? What is it that makes you not be a genuine Christian? What is it that makes you, when the judgment of justice from heaven is given about you, there are things the Bible would say, God would say, angels say, one thing thou lackest. 
allow the word of God to discern it, direct you into the harmony with the word of God, the will of God, the purposes of God, that you will practice a Christian and a genuine Christian lifestyle as we are with the second coming. And so prayer today is among the many things we have to pray for. For instance, we are praying, we want to pray for God to speak clearly to us, you in particular, in his one today. We also want to pray for strong convictions and a willing heart to receive the sharp sword of the word, even if it cuts. Pray for efficiency and Holy Spirit power for all those who are translating the Bible and the spirit of prophecy into many languages. We just want to pray that God will help us each become literature evangelists and that we will share glory tracts or a word in season to those who are weary. We just want to pray for our schools and educational institutions to be true to God's word and his mission for our young people. Now, this and many of those that are in your list for prayer is what we want to present before the Lord this moment. I want to invite you that you may join with me as you seek the Lord in prayer. Let's pray together. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the privilege of this precious moment. As we fellowship and worship you, as we bring our supplications to you, Lord, we pray that you will forgive us our sins and our shortcomings, cleanse us from all manner of righteousness, Accept this worship and fellowship and this moment with you. The Lord shall not be just another program, but indeed it shall be a turning point for somebody because they will have surrendered your, their hearts to you. We are speaking about the power of the word. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Quick and powerful. It's a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the soul. Lord, I'm praying that today may your word work in us to discern, to dissect, to cut so deep, even though in your heart, that you shall make and create in us new hearts. We can love you. We can be genuine, Lord, before you. We can practice a genuine Christian walk, and we shall be prepared for the second coming. Lord, we pray that you shall meet all the prayer requests that we are presenting to you this morning. This afternoon, this evening, wherever my viewers watching from, many challenges of our lives, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And as many are seeking you, Lord, we pray that you shall answer all these prayer requests. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my dear viewer, for being part of this ministry. Thank you for waiting upon this program. Once again, I want to invite you, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do, so that you may continue receiving notifications as you continue through the journey of 40 days of prayer. If you have not been sharing, we invite you to share widely with your friends as much as you can. Remember, the seven-member list that you ought to have, continue praying for those people. Also, encourage the people you're inviting that they may also have a seven-member list to be interceding for as you journey through the 40 days of prayer. See you tomorrow.